Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to have a closer look at the Zod Altus. I took it for a test fly yesterday, go back and have a look at that video if you want to see how well it flies. It's a wonderful model, uh, I really really like it, it's got some great design features and some quirky little bits as well, but we'll have a closer look at all of these things. <music> Starting with the nose, uh, I've actually taped the nose on just for a bit of extra security, but that is uh, held in with magnets. This is the optional uh, camera in the nose. Nose can put your FPV camera in there if you want to, but then sort of the HD part of it, uh, the, F the video transmitter part of it, will just have to sit up on top somewhere. You could gouge a little square out of there, but this is what I used. Uh, I just pop my little pod up on top uh, so that I can change it out if I have to. There are a couple of screw holes here that you can mount things onto in the, the plastic part here. Uh, this sort of the internal part of the nose. Now you can put cameras internally there. It's big enough for GoPros, uh, run cam thumbs, Insta 360s, all of those things. And, it, and it, they provide all of these uh, foam inserts as well as plywood cutouts uh, to replace this plastic shape here. So lots of options for putting cameras in there. Batteries, plenty of space in there for batteries. Uh, I was using one Zod 4S 1P 18650. That fits right up in the nose there like that. And with the addition of the HD camera set up there, that was balancing perfectly on the CG marks. There is enough space in there to fit a second 18650 uh, and you can just push it back a little bit, move the camera back a little bit and it balances again. So lots of battery options. Here's a 4S3300 that also easily fits in there. Uh, and if you push that back there like that, uh, that again will balance the CG. So uh, they thought out that very nicely indeed comes with a strap, there's the battery cable coming forward there, little spot for a GPS up here. Now the motors, uh, this is the, the uh, kit version so it's my own motors, they are, they are MISS uh, 22038-1750kV and 7x4 props. The props are probably a little bit big but it's, it's within the range, it's fine. I think maybe 6x4 props will be better. Possibly. The cells there, we've got four screws, uh, just separate the two parts and then all the ESC and the wiring fits within there. Very good airflow coming through there. You've got inlet and outlet air ducts there. They even tell you which way they suggest the props go on, but it doesn't really matter. We get this uh, strip of sticky stuff to uh, protect the leading edge, but it doesn't stick very well. Uh, you really have to scrub and clean the foam to make it stick, I think. And I found in my flight, uh, when it stalled, it dropped the right wing. And I think I think that's because this strip here was hanging down, so disrupting the airflow terribly. So uh, I think you're gonna have to tape them on as well. Servos fit underneath, and uh, that is a hole that goes straight through. So uh, I would tape the bottom of that hole to cover it up, just to stop the uh, pressure equalizing through that hole and, and mucking up the flow over the wing. Um, I've put my push rod connection two holes down, so in the middle of the servo arm, uh, that seemed to give me the right amount of throws. Nice ball link push rods. And the control horn uh, is linked with the reinforcing spar, so that is rock solid, not going anywhere. Uh, I'm using King Max servos, Metal Gear digital servos. The wings have electrical connectors and a bolt holding it in, uh, so you have, let's pull this off anyway, they give you these covers to go over everything which is very nice pull that off we have three servo wires coming out here one for the ESC one for the servo and another spare for uh, any equipment you want to put out in the, the little uh, bays provided bays out here a video transmitter and receiver and things like that if you want to but these electrical connectors are very good the um, power cables for the ESC goes in there as well 
can see I've added some non-skid tape there to, to grip it and throw. They do have sort of dimpled area there, but I find it really hard to hang on to it at that point there. It needs to be a little bit further forward and this grip tape is uh, better at gripping. Space back here for the flight control board, uh, the rat's nest there. That is an Atom RC Navi board, easily fitting in there. You can see the uh, wing bolt there, which is only just long enough to pass through. Let's pull this off anyway, and we'll have a look at the connector. So you can see that the wing just pulls off like that, and then we've got this very nice electrical connector there. And you might be able to see the wing has a little bit of an under camber in it, so that's sort of, uh, it's like having half flaps on all the time, I suppose. So good for nice, slow, floaty flights. Express LRS receiver there. The tail boom is just uh, uh, held on by a, a twist lock there. So you can pull the boom off if, if you want to. You would just have to disconnect the tail servos. So you can break it down nice and easily for, for travel. Very nicely thought out. Now the tail, here's the interesting bit. Uh, the, there are no push rods. The, uh, control, the control surfaces are direct drive. You can see that's the servo there. Uh, and that is the servo arm, I guess you would call it. And this little part here goes into that cup. Of course, that means you are very restricted with which servo you can use. It has to match the spline pattern of this cup, this cup piece here. Otherwise, you're going to have to somehow make up your own cup and screw it onto your servo arm or something like that. So you need to have Zod servos, or these are Atom RC camera gimbal servos that happen to have this, the same spline pattern. Uh, they're not, not a common spline pattern, so you won't be able to just pick one up out of your spares box, I don't think. Tail just slots in like that, and there's one bolt there to hold it in place, so it's all easy to uh, pull apart if you need to. It's a bit tricky threading the cable from the servo all the way down into the into the body, but uh, I managed it, so it's definitely possible. So it is a really nicely designed model. Uh, Zod are always very good with their designs, and uh, this is innovative and new, and uh, it's a, a, a lovely flying model too. Apart from the quirks of the tail, if you've got the uh, kit version, uh, I can't fault it really, but I would recommend putting tape over the hole through the wing where the servo arm passes through and taping down this leading edge all the way across. Um, I'm going to test it again. I was dropping a wing in the stall. Uh, it wasn't bad because uh, swept forward wings, so they do recover very quickly and you're in control the whole time. But just to prevent that right wing dropping, uh, I'm going to try these things again. Good quality EPP foam, nice and tough. It's not going to break very easily. Let's go and have a look at the INAV setup now anyway. Now the INAV setup, it, of course this plane is perfectly good as a line of sight flyer. You don't need INAV or flight, flight control board. It is a very stable, very smooth flyer by itself. So I'm on INAV 7.1.0 mixer. I do have two motors there, but I don't have differential thrust. Um, don't really need it. Here's the mix. We've got ailerons on separate channels and the 50-50 mix for the rudder surfaces. Um, just have standard ESC protocol and 50 hertz refresh rate. I could increase them because I've got digitals and BL heli, but I haven't. I had to reverse the aileron channels to get them working in the correct direction. Ports, I have GPS receiver and MSP display port for my DJI goggles and uh, air unit. Configuration, this uh, Atom RC Navi board, you need to play with this current meter scale a little bit because it under, under reads the current uh, a little bit. Uh, I'll yet to do that. PID tuning, I'm just using the stock PIDs. I did increase the feed forward up to 100 to give me a bit more elevator control. And in mechanics, I've got three degrees of nose up trim, level trim, to maintain altitude in angle mode, advanced settings. I've dropped the cruise throttle down from 1400 because it doesn't need that speed. 1360 is good for my setup. Not using auto launch receiver as Express LRS, so I've got Crossfire selected there. 
these are my modes. I have arm, angle, manual and acro on one switch, uh, cruise and loiter and acro on another switch, return to home on a switch by itself, three page OSD and a beeper in case I lose it. And in the OSD I've got the DJI WTF video format because that's what my goggles are using. This is a very, very nice plane. Uh, almost as good as the Swordfish. I'll have to do a side-by-side -side test, I think, because uh, they it would be an interesting comparison. And I need to see how this is going to fly again with the uh, holes covered up and the leading edge um, stuck down. Maybe even with some smaller props as well. But a very good design, Zod. Uh, congratulations. This is a ripper. I think it'll be a very successful FPV plane. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.